Bine v-am regăsit la Eurodicționar, așa după cum bine știți, cu foarte puțin timp în urmă la Chișinău s-a derulat un etnogest festival. Remarcabil, frumos, cu nume foarte, foarte mari. Atât de mare încât am putea spune că la un moment dat pe scenă au urcat muzicieni care se află undeva în vârful absolut al uh, ierarhiei mondiale, pe zonele pe care îi cântă. De exemplu, Trilo Gurtu este unul dintre acești artiști. S-ar putea spune despre el și s-a spus nu odată că probabil este cel mai mare percuționist în viață. E vorba despre tot ce înseamnă instrumente din care cineva poate scoate un sunet. De la tradiționala tabla până la uh, căleți, uh, săbii, orice vă puteți imagina, cu apă, fără apă, din orice triloguri tu poate face un sunet. Și mai mult decât atât, de-a lungul timpului din 1974 și până acum, de la primul său album, a editat cam câte un album în fiecare an. Asta înseamnă enorm. Și nu a obosit și nu este absolut deloc consumat. Și mai mult decât atât, are un crez. S-a născut în Bombay, în India, într-o țară frământată, după cum probabil știți, de o sumedenie de stratificări sociale, de căutări identitare, de eliberări de sub englez, de exemplu. Da? Toate acestea au creat în India și în sufletul lui Trilog Urtu ceva aparte. Haideți să vedem cine este Trilog Urtu și apoi intrăm în dialog cu el. Trilog Gurtu, artist de talie mondială, unul dintre cei mai inovativi și mai spectaculoși percuționiști ai momentului. Cu rădăcine adânci în tradiția indiană, reușește să creeze ritmuri care ridică în picioare zeci de mii de spectatori oriunde în lume. Trilog Gurtu s-a născut la Mumbai într-o familie de indieni brahmaniști. La îndemnul mamei sale, cântăreața Shoba Gurtu a învățat să cânte la tabla, principalul instrument de percuție al muzicii clasice indiene. Totuși nu s-a oprit aici și acum poate scoate muzică din obiecte care nu seamănă deloc cu instrumente muzicale. Desemnat timp de 5 ani cel mai bun percuționist al lumii, artistul are o carte de vizită impresionantă. Apariții pe 126 de albume, 54 de complicații, 5 DVD-uri, iar muzica sa este dată ca exemplu în două cărți despre performanță în percuție. Lista trofeelor sale conține 12 premii internaționale. A fost nominalizat ca cel mai bun artist din Asia și Pacific la premiile BBC Radio 3 în 2002, 2003 și 2004 și cel mai bun percuționist de revistele Drum Magazine și Downbeat timp de șapte ani consecutiv, din 1994 până în 2002. Să revenim așadar, dialogul va fi în limba engleză cu domnul Gurtu. Mr. Gurtu, thank you very much for accepting this interview. Thank you. Sir, uh, you are uh, an Indian. Yeah, by birth only. By birth only, yes. On the other hand, um, some have already said that you are kind of a god of percussion. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, it's, 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 it's okay. <laughs> that uh, that doesn't flatter me. It's okay. It's, it's simply okay. It's okay. Uh, well, on the other hand, I indeed have already seen by discussing with you before this uh, recording that you are a very friendly, very open, and I would say very humble person. What would you think about normality? What is normality in your point of view? Normal, normal is to be yourself. You know, I mean, uh, I think you said somebody or somebody say I'm God of percussion, but I deal with music, you know, and not only with percussion. Percussion is just an instrument. You know, it's like a cup of tea. You put tea. The, nobody thinks about the cup. Everybody thinks about the tea. True. Uh, so, so it's like that. You know, everything's percussion and then God, but nobody thinks of where God is, in, inside you only, is not outside. So these things, which when they become normal, which is not normal for some people, because they have other ways of thinking, 
uh, I think that's normal for me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not everything in Indian tradition is good for me. I have to think for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I, everything what is told in the temple or the church or in the... No, I have to think for myself. If, I, if, if you want to think about God, you know, if you want to uh, 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 dissect this uh, phenomena mm -hmm. or anything, you know, music, you have to think for yourself. If you say what style of music you want to play. I decided I don't want to play like anybody else but myself. I don't want to be a second class citizen, especially to American, British or, you know, because I come from India and mm -hmm. I was, the Indian, Indians were colonized. So I said, I don't want to be like that. I want to be myself, my own style of music. And so this is normal for me. That, that's a very interesting thing you have already said and I'm very glad that you did it. You said before that you don't want to be something else but yourself and you don't want to be a second class citizen. Um, the people of Moldova already decided to be themselves and they're trying so hard to create their own identity, their own country. Um, they're opening themselves to everything which is new, such as this kind of jazz festival. Uh, how would you advise um, them or anyone else to have the courage to be himself? Because you have already said that you have to be yourself in front of the Americans or of the British. Or anybody, uh, anybody. Or anybody, anybody. else. Who, 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 who think they are powerful than you are. Now, the Russians, for example, think that they are more powerful than the Moldavians. What's to yeah, be but done is, with this? It, 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 it is a scale uh, because they are huge. But you know, uh, we say in India, an uh, insect in an ant goes in the ear of the elephant, he's, he's messed up. <laughs> true, true. Absolutely. Even a toothache can give you a big problem in the whole body. So we just have to wait, you know, because I think uh, in the end, humility pays. It doesn't matter how big it is, you know. The, the bigger the, you know, the giant is, he cannot run faster. Mm -hmm. The smaller you are, my mother used to tell me, uh, <clears throat> don't be arrogant because you might be famous the way you are, you know. Mm -hmm. I learned from my mother a lot for music and she was also like my friend. Not only, you know, my mother. I used to joke with her, I used to cook with her. So, and she told me, be like grass, don't be a tree. You know, then if you think why you have to be a grass is because when there is like, um, you say, you have a big oh, thunder, storm, the tree, who falls first is a tree. The grass is always bent and will come up again. The tree will fall. For sure, it's the first thing to fall in the tree. Because he thinks, I'm big, I am, you know, nobody, he will go. So all these things, what you're saying, is just a mat matter of time. It's just a matter of time. And if you, I think if the people here believe, and I'm sure, it's a matter of like a sculpture. Mm -hmm. uh, when he has to do the sculpture, he gets a stone. And he, he has to hammer, 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 hammer till he gets a shape. So it's the same thing. You have to hammer, 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 hammer. But you have to trust in yourself. Yes, the yeah, and the, or the whole community has to trust. Everybody has to have a trust. There will be few who will be, you know, will be weak, but you have to pull them and say no. Like with my group, I tell them, you have to play, don't play cliche and don't play American jazz. I'm not playing American jazz music. I'm not... It's a very loose word, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very loose word, jazz. You know, everybody calls jazz, but what is this? What is this? What is, who, who can define, you know? Somebody invented it, you know, and they got a big mileage out of marketing, but what is this thing? Why I am identified with jazz? Because I play improvised music. So, so uh, define, your, define your music then. So, so I, I said, you know, I, you have to think, a lot how to define music. You cannot define music, you know. Nobody can define music. You can just give it some uh, uh, shape or, or not even shape. You can even say something and then somebody writes it down, you know, in normal terms. Mm -hmm. And so people have other names to, to, to sell a product. Like you have purkari, wine. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't call purkari, it will be just wine. Red or white. You see red and white. 
but he has to call it pur curry mm -hmm. and then he has to say it's a, a merlot it is but this is a norm mm -hmm. good or bad this is a question mark we don't know so with jazz somebody the american call it jazz mm -hmm. for us improvised music in india is 90% of improvised we don't call it jazz we don't have that tradition we our music is coming from 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 the vedas mm -hmm. from the uh, ho holy holy scriptures it's very yeah. holy very very spiritual for us so how do you explain to somebody who doesn't think spiritual he'll think he's mad what is he talking about music is spiritual are you crazy you know you, you never know so this loose thing you know you just have to go well very interesting to hear that because that already anticipates my next approach um, you have almost all of your um, artist activity um, worked with several artists various parts of the world different ethnicities and you have said as a motto even on your uh, website that you build bridges you don't build barriers uh, would you explain this are there differences uh, are just is there specific identity and if it is how can uh, people join but still keep their identity see i just said now the loose word of jazz so it is like if you you in our community you are okay if you are playing something different you are not okay mm -hmm. this is wrong everything has to be not to be identified with one name of music and i was saying that music doesn't have a name you give it a name to sell it huh mm -hmm. because i i said you have to think a lot how to convince people or how to say what you know so i would i would i would say if you define god the, your answer for the music is there then the definition of music is there you mm -hmm. cannot define god it take is taken thousand thousands everybody gave up they said you can't define you mm -hmm. don't see it so how can you define is the same thing music you don't you don't see it you can play it it touches you and it's gone you don't see it we give it names and some say i see color i never see any color i'm so engrossed in play you know you know i forget myself yes i'm totally involved and i forget that's the beautiful art of music so you involve all these people in this and they forget everything their problems so the barrier is broken the barrier is broken but what happens afterwards this is a problem it starts again <laughs> you know so so to say uh, music is one you know it doesn't matter for where music is one it is nothing different uh, the space here is not different than in india or japan or china it's the same space it's the same thing air is the same maybe a little bit more polluted and but everything is the same you know so it's all one so we should try to if you uh, think in like what i then you wouldn't have the barrier because you don't think anybody is separate than you are maybe you have a little bit more money or or uh, something better clothes or you have a better life i don't know but this is also very material and it is going to pass is going to pass for sure like the music is played is gone it will not be the same so the barrier is created by us only we are the people who create the barrier and and make also the bridges mm. we are we are one and the same so if we break this our mental structure and then you know but everybody doesn't think like that this is the um, Well, that's a big problem. That's the it? problem. It's a bigger, uh, the it's a big ego problem. Uh, exactly. Now, uh, speaking about this ego problem, speaking about differences in thinking, um, <clears throat> did you ever have a complex of being born, for example, in India, regarded by some as a second-rank country, not as a country of the elite, because some of our Moldavian brothers always. tend to think that there is something wrong with them with their place with their country they're afraid that they they could be regarded as second hand citizens uh, did you ever feel a, such a thing and if yes how did you overcome it see i that's how i said i don't want to be a second that's when i, I decided no is wrong 
uh, my story was I loved music. I played with my mother and I, I always thought music is spiritual. I don't know about how people think here. In India, music is spiritual. Now it's going away from that. It's become more like a business and materialistic thing. In Before, I was never brought up like that. So I didn't know the material part of it. Mm -hmm. And I never thought, you know, that if I come out in the world, it's going to be that ugly, like what you said, second class. I started noticing it. Of course, you, you get uh, uh, ruled by British, then you get ruled, you know, the, the Mughals come to conquer, people get converted, you know. Mm -hmm. That, when I was a child, I never knew it. Everything is beautiful because you don't have a mind, you know, because children are like God for us. In India, they say. So when you grow up, you start thinking, oh God, you, know, you get, you know, in India, we also have discrimination. It's not only in here or anywhere else, in India too. So I felt this also. But there was the spirituality and the music was so strong, I said, I don't give a damn about these guys, you know, because nobody would teach me to play drums. I was playing tabla, mm -hmm. classical. And some people don't want to, they didn't want to have anything to do with this Indian tradition because they used to think they are British. Mm -hmm. They are a little bit different, you know. And from my childhood, I, I would revolt with them and I would make fun of them. And I said, you know what, I'll play your instrument, you see. <laughs> so when I used to borrow, I, I, will, I don't want to go into the details, but it was a big, they, they want to make a biography about me and how I started playing the drums and what came, this is, you know, I'm making it in short. My brother used to play also in the films, so I used to, mm -hmm. but nobody helped me. So I just went on my way, you know, I just said, I, I you know, you know I, I, I just said, I'll show these people now. And I did it, you know, and then I went to America with, a, and then they told, exactly, same thing. You felt like, you, I felt it there more, you know, oh God, you know, Everybody wants to go to America and, you know, I wanted to study in Berkeley. So they refused me admission. And I never knew, you know, I got control. Oh, you have a visa, you know, I had everything, you know, because you cannot go to work in America without a visa. They can work here without a visa, but we can't. So this all things started working, you know, I said, why am I here? What is so great about this place? I don't like the food. I don't like the, the, the way they speak English. Why is, what is that that is fascinating me? You know, it came and they refused my admission in the Berkeley College. And then I told this dean, you know what? I go back and one day I come and I show you. And this exactly that what happened. Now they call me to teach there. Great. Let's stop here for a minute. Let's just show to the people why do they call you to teach there what did you achieve and why haideți să vedem pe scurt de ce l-au chemat totuși pe Trilogur tu după ce l-au refuzat la facultate să se întoarcă acolo drept profesor ce cântă de fapt Trilogur tu haideți să vedem Deși a fost născut într-o familie de artiști faimoși, Triloc a ieșit pentru prima dată pe scenă într-un mod destul de neașteptat. Așa s-a întâmplat că, exact înainte de concert, mama lui Triloc, legendara cântăreață de Tumri, Șoba Gurtu, a rămas fără acompaniatorul său care cânta la tabla, un instrument de percuție compus din două tobe tradiționale indiene. Așadar, Triloc a fost aproape împins pe scenă, iar mama i-a ordonat să cânte și el a cântat fără niciun fel de repetiție. Publicul extaziat a tot chemat artiștii la bis. Prietenii de joacă l-au încurajat, iar fratele său mai mare, Narendra, a spus că dacă nu era această întâmplare, Triloc oricum trebuia împins de cineva pe scenă. De altfel, prietenii și rudele întotdeauna au povestit că Triloc a fost un geniu încă de mic, că era talentat, dar și foarte ordonat. Cu toate acestea, ușor nu i-a fost. Spre exemplu, ca să împrumute toba de la prietenul tatălui său, băiatul a trebuit să care apă pentru toată familia acestuia. Primul său 
său tutore, Abdul Saheb, l-a educat într-o manieră foarte severă și riguroasă. Dacă protejatul său nu cânta corect, mânca o bătaie bună. Dacă băiatul cânta bine, era răsplătit cu un bacșiș sau cu un bilet la un meci de wrestling. Un lucru era clar. Atunci când are dispoziție, Triloc are magie în degete. După ce a acumulat experiență, tânărul muzician a vrut să-și continue studiile la Colegiul de Muzică Berkeley din Boston. Dorea din tot sufletul să cânte ca un adevărat baterist american, însă americanii l-au respins. Așa a ajuns să cânte numai ca Trilog Gurtu. A plecat într-o odisee muzicală prin Europa și Africa. A cântat în peste 200 de concerte cu așa legende ale muzicii ca John McLaughlin, Don Cherry sau Ian Garbarek. După mulți ani și multe premii, printre care și un premiu Grammy, recunoașterea și faima internațională l-au transformat pe Triloc din acompaniatorul mamei sale într-o legendă vie. Colegiul de muzică Berkeley i-a oferit poziția de membru de onoare. Artistul a respins oferta. Deși pare o glumă, dar prima vizită în America nu este o amintire din cele mai plăcute pentru muzician. Acum Triloc este cel mai talentat și mai imprevizibil percuționist de talie mondială, care astăzi poate înregistra un album cu Robert Miles, iar mâine poate să încânte mii de spectatori cu sunete extravagante scoase din tot felul de obiecte absolut nemuzicale. Majoritatea compozitorilor importanți ai secolului și-ar dori să cânte cu Triloc Gurtu. Albumul de debut al percuționistului Usreft, realizat acum 25 de ani, a educat generații de muzicieni indieni și a influențat muzica din toată lumea, pentru că muzica lui Gurtu este peste tot. Să ne întoarcem așadar, știu că pentru o parte dintre dumneavoastră ceea ce ați auzit este undeva la limita experimentului muzical, dar acest tip de muzică, după cum tocmai am aflat, are legătură cu spiritualitatea și mai ales cu libertatea improvizației. Libertate. Asta e un cuvânt cu adevărat interesant. Să ne întoarcem la Tilo Gurtu. Mr. Gurtu, someone has defined this kind of music as being the supreme expression of liberty. Would you agree with this kind of definition? having the liberty to improvise and to take your uh, imagination, spirit, uh, power of uh, expression to the superior uh, uh, expression of liberty? I think music is, 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 is made for that the reason it is there, it is used in the temple. You know, I'm, after a long time, I was really looking for a master, a spiritual master, and I found my spiritual master. His name is Ranjit Maharaj. And he, then he gave me, he said, okay, whatever you do, it will take you there. But do it knowing yourself. You know, I'll make it very short. So this gave me the conviction that if there is liberty, you must also know how to use it. You cannot abuse it. You cannot abuse it. You have to know how to use it and use it for, for your own good. I, I cannot change the world, but I, I have to change myself first. If people see me changing, there are some other fans or people, oh, I is, the, whatever he does is nice. There are five people will change. You know, I cannot change. I cannot change the world, but I can change myself. This I learned. So liberty, whatever <coughs> anybody does with it, it is his, his choice. I, you know, You can improvise. Improvisation is 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 there, so you can uh, um, play every day different. Mm -hmm. It's not the same thing you play every day. Like classical people, they play the same thing, they make the most money, and they play the same thing with different interpretation. And But uh, improvisation is our art in India. And this is what you what you cherish most in music. I've studied that in India. Yes, I've not studied that in America or anywhere. I've studied in India how to improvise systematically, system systematically, mm -hmm. not random. Well, that's an interesting concept. I don't think we will go into it, but it is indeed interesting to improvise systematically. But uh, I would like to to take it to, to some other part of discussion, to that part in which. Uh, during your career, you have played uh, along uh, 
other big musicians coming from different uh, ethnies and different traditions. John McLaughlin, for example, or Terry Ribdal, or Miroslav Vitus. They were coming from different parts of the world. They had different languages, different colors, different experiences. How can one still keep his identity, but cooperate, coexist, co-create with someone who's not like him, actually? You know, because you, when, when, once you're confident and you know the language of music, like we have in India, so you don't have this problem of fitting with anybody. The, the problem is the, the, the other side trying to fit with you. That, it, that was a problem. Mm -hmm. They would not, because our education was strong in India. And if you really use it, and we are open-minded, because I was very interested in Africa too. That's why I did a lot of India and Africa <coughs> project. And how open you are and how fast you are in analyzing. And then once you're open, when you're listening, you can fit without losing your identity, you know. You can, like, like, like language, I can talk to everybody, but I know who I am. Doesn't matter, you know. It's very, you have to keep your identity, you, yourself, always the first thing. And the, everything around fits with, with you. There is a fear among the Moldavians that if they <coughs> would somehow um, get closer, for example, to the uh, European community, their identity would be dissolved, diminished, or completely extinct. How uh, does identity still survive in a very globalized world? How could the identity express itself, for example, in the so-called world music? I think it's, it's confidence in yourself, first. Your confidence, who you are, like, okay, I am, you know, it'll, what the one guy said, God exists in everybody. So if you are, say, you're confident about that, you know, and what you're doing. So you're not going with fear. Mm -hmm. Fear is the biggest problem for everything. Fear, doubt, and everything comes. Oh, am I second class? <coughs> am I whatever it is? But you have to go with confidence if you want to go and, and match the whole world with Europe because Europe has his identity. Mm -hmm. They will not change. They have the identity. So you, maybe, I think, I see if you have identity, you don't change, but you mix with them. You know, the problem is not, we are not, uh, if you're going to some, like I live in Germany, I adapt to, I take the good things of Germany if I'm living there. I speak the language and I try to uh, integrate. Not that I live there and I don't want to do anything with the Germans. Or if I live in Italy, I don't know, no, I'm just, so you just come to earn money and you're going. So there is, you know, that's, that's not integration, no? Correct. So, it's, it's, so we, we all have to have our minds also in place saying that, okay, if you want to do that, you know, we have, we have confidence, you know, and then we do that. You go there, first of all, you're putting your foot with no confidence. You know, mm, I like that, mm, mm. Then it's mm, 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 all the time, you know. <laughs> true. Absolutely true. Okay, uh, you have explained how it comes when you go there. But what happens if they come in, in, in your country and try to, I don't know, there is a feeling that the foreigners are always invaders. Uh, for example, uh, applying it to music, uh, John McLaughlin, he decided mm. to create the Mahavishnu Orchestra. How did it look like someone from the British tradition speaking about Mahavishnu, trying to create something in India? Was it an insult for the Indians? <clears throat> no, 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 no. He didn't, you know, he, he used it so well and he, he, he loves India. He's not abusing. He's using it so well in a positive way. He's not abusing. That's what I'm saying. He's giving credit and respect. He knows what India is. He loves that. He's only one of them who knows it. There are a lot of musicians who only talk about India on the top, but he's gone to the bottom of it all. There are very few who have done it. Maybe John and then uh, was also Don Cherry, who mm -hmm. they went down really deep and they used it. I think everybody was very proud. I'm, I'm, proud, I'm proud of John that he did. He's one of the only ones who really uh, uh, brings Indian musicians or Indian music in proper context. Mm -hmm. There are very few. 
Everybody else is talking, they're taking like this as a fashion. He did it for real. I think, no. He did a, he's still doing a great job. So Indians are not afraid of the fact that a lot of people are attracted to India. They try to come, they understand more or less. Uh, this you know, if you effect. have so much, they will steal. How much they will steal? We have so much. They can take. They were taking for years and years and years from India. They have taken yoga and they did nothing with it. Yeah, but they're, they're calling it something else. You know, that's what I'm saying. They have music and they still start calling jazz, world music. But the, the, the root, the real thing will not change. You can call it any name. No problem. If the rose is, you call it by any name, will remain rose only. So let them steal. They, they cannot. But the, the understanding is not there. Like the, what real Indians, who, there are other Indians who also don't understand. They're running after the best. There are Indians who really understand. They will, I can say, take how much you want, but you don't really understand. Take it. You know, it's like in Africa also, you have a very good tradition. Mm -hmm. So you, you appreciate that Africans are still genuine somehow? Yeah, but they, you know, they are, they're made to remain poor. India, India is coming out. The India, will, India is an intelligent thing. They will not now bow down to the West. The poor Africans, you know, they have, they have, that's a fantastic tradition. If you see the dance and the music is very, is very close to, to that's what I, I put together, India and Africa, mm -hmm. with Salif Keita and Anjali Kicho is about India and Africa. If you go South India, they are very like, you know, it's beautiful, but it's not materialistic. They don't know. It's all about, you know, they, they don't, mm -hmm. when I went to stay in Africa, they didn't even have a watch. The, wa the watch was the sun going up and down. That was evening, night, and that's it. It's very, very natural way of living also, you know. We are coming very close to the, the, the ending of this interview. Um, is there anything specific you would like to transmit to, to our viewers right now? Uh, I don't know, a kind of, a, not exactly a teaching, but a creed of yours. I've been saying, I mean, I, I spoke a lot about everything, you know, is all contained in, in that. Uh, I, I, I just say that you just have to follow your path, you know. It's, it's, it can be hard or it can be easy. In the end, see, the good days also end and the bad days also. That's what I, I've, I've learned from my teacher, you know. So don't see it negative, you know. Even the good day is, it will go. And the bad day is, you know, which is giving you a lot of thorn and trouble, it will also go. But be focused. And then, you know, I can only speak about myself or about the music, which can do. I don't know the politics, economics, you know. I, I, I'd rather not know all that. <laughs> too, too much knowledge is, is a disaster. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Gurtu. No, primo aici a fost interviu cu Trilog Gurtu. Um, dacă l-ați descoperit abia acum, căutați-l, ascultați-l și veți înțelege mult mai mult decât ceea ce am putut noi să obținem în acest mic dialog. Dar una peste alta, lecția e clară, nu vă temeți, cel care merge fără încredere înainte, într-adevăr, se va pierde. Până data viitoare, numai bine! Muzica